This week on a and the World Health Organization teams up with the Seventh-day Adventist Church to address infant mortality. Adventist humanitarians gear up to provide relief in Myanmar in response to severe flooding. And a suspected arson causes more than $80,000 worth of damage to the property of an Adventist church in the U.S. state of Washington. These stories and more coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, in an unprecedented partnership, the World Health Organization teamed up with the Seventh-day Adventist Church to reduce infant and maternal mortality rates. This is the first time the WHO has partnered with a faith-based organization on a global scale initiative. Approximately 50 nursing professionals and educators from around the world recently met in Bloemfontein, South Africa to implement the project in four African countries. The million dollar project is funded by OPEC Foundation for International Development through the World Health Organization. According to WHO, one of the reasons for infant and maternal mortality is the lack of qualified midwives around the world. The World Health Organization believes the Adventist Church has the global infrastructure that's needed to address this issue. Dr. Peter Landless, Director of Health Ministries for the Seventh Adventist World Church, has more on why the WHO decided to partner with the denomination. We as Seventh-day Adventists are very blessed in that we have a very wide footprint around the world, working in over 210 countries, and the World Health Organization recognizes this. In 2007, they invited the Seventh-day Adventists, among 17 other faith-based organizations, to meet on collaboration of achieving millennial development goals. Maternal and child health improvement is one of those. And because we have hospitals in many parts of the world, uh, this is partly why we have the opportunity of partnering in this very, very special opportunity. Our particular goals on this one is to work with four centers in Africa. Six weeks of heavy rain combined with the effects of Cyclone Coleman have led to major flooding and landslides in the nation of Myanmar. The damaging waters have taken the lives of at least 69 people and impacted more than 250,000 residents. More floods and landslides are expected in the coming weeks. Although the offices of the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Myanmar were flooded, its staff are currently coordinating emergency response to assist victims in the hardest hit areas of the nation. At least 32 Adventist churches were damaged as a result of the flooding, but this hasn't negatively impacted the spirit of service among members. Through Adventist Community Services, members have distributed items to 500 people in need. Adventist Community Services is also organizing food distribution for 2,000 people in the country's southeastern region who have been displaced by the flood. Multiple fires in a case of suspected arson leaves a church in the U.S. state of Washington with $80,000 worth of damage. The fires destroyed several items that were a part of the Kelso Longview Seventh-day Adventist Church's Christmas outreach initiative called the Journey to Bethlehem. The event is an outdoor walkthrough experience which takes place on a plot of land adjacent to the church, illustrating the story of Jesus' birth. While the biggest and most damaging fires took place last week, this wasn't the first time the church experienced fires this year. Parts of the church's playground and sections of its town of Bethlehem, which has elements that stay up year-round, were burned in two separate fires in April. Six fires altogether were started on July 29. The fires destroyed numerous materials, including 90% of the props used to make the interactive experience. The Journey to Bethlehem has been an annual ministry of the Kelso Longview Church for 18 years. Fernita Buddy of Adventist Risk Management shares how the Seventh-day Adventist Church's insurance company responds to property damage. Adventist Risk Management treats all fire claims the same. We send out an independent adjuster who goes on site to survey the damage, also conducts on site interviews, and then will file a report which they send back to us. Then our claims department will then review the report and also review the organization's insurance policy and the coverage in which we can pay. If it appears that someone else is at fault for the incident, then we pursue subrogation, which means we attempt to recoup the amount of costs that we paid for the claim. This may mean that we work with another insurance company 
to pay that cost or we also work with local law enforcement to determine who was at fault. When it comes to eating breakfast foods, Australians and New Zealanders put their trust behind a Seventh-day Adventist food company. Sanitarium Health and Wellbeing was recently awarded the 2015 Most Trusted Brand for Breakfast Foods in Australia and New Zealand. This is the fifth consecutive year that Sanitarium has topped the category in New Zealand and the third consecutive year in Australia. Sanitarium's Wheat Bix breakfast cereal has been a staple for the South Pacific countries since the 1920s. Sanitarium is also known for its annual triathlon, which is the world's largest kids triathlon series. Adventist students attending a Catholic school in Rwanda are asking for the school to honor their Sabbath observance. The group of students have petitioned their school to have the right not to participate in mandatory activities that fall between Friday sunset and Saturday sunset. According to the students, the school has forced all students to participate in sporting events and classes that take place on Saturdays. jean Vier Ishmael Gassana, Director General of Rwanda's Education Board, told African news website All Africa, we urge schools to be flexible regarding religious beliefs. School regulations have to be respected, but under no circumstances should they infringe on the student's right to worship. The Director General also added that Freedom of worship is also a constitutional right of all Rwandans. A free health clinic sponsored by the Seventh-day Adventist Church gave an estimated $8 million worth of services in the U.S. state of Washington. The Your Best Pathway to Health event in Spokane wrapped up this week after providing residents medical and dental services free of charge. The most recent Pathways event took place in the city of San Antonio a few months before a GC session. Here's a testimony from a person who decided to join the Seventh-day Adventist Church as a result of the event. Well, here we are, Patty, at the General Conference session, and um, God has done amazing things in your life over the past few weeks and months. Tell us a little bit about what he did when you first came to this place, this Alamo Dome, just a few months ago. Well, the Seventh-day Adventist Church um, did a health fair with Pathways to Health, and uh, for three days I was able to see doctors that I've been having problems because I don't have insurance, and um, there was years that I wouldn't smile because I had a bad tooth and today I could smile because they fixed my tooth and uh, what touched my heart was that the people, the volunteers, they, they gave me such hope because the love, the respect they gave me. The dentist, um, she knew I was petrified of dentists and she hummed songs to me while she was drilling at my tooth and that just calmed my nerves, but everybody, I was barely hanging on to life. You know, I was ready to give up, and by coming to this event, it just changed my life, totally changed my life. And then I wanted to get baptized, but I was a smoker, but he took that away too, so. I'm just a totally different person. I have, I have faith and I have hope today. And Patty, um, you told me that when you came into the dome that first time, there was something that you sensed um, in the people and in, in the way you were treated. Tell us a little bit about that and how that impacted you. It gave me hope to, to realize that there are people who love and care for others. You know, um, I've been banging on the doors at different areas in San Antonio to be seen because of medical issues I have and all the doors kept slamming in my face and I was just so tired and fed up and when I found out about the event at the Alamo Dome I said all right and then when I got here it was just the love I mean just watching people you could see the glow in their eyes something that I've been yearning for you know I've been feeling trying to fill that void and Little I know that it was Jesus and everybody. What does it mean to you to get baptized tonight? What, is it, what does it mean to you? It's a new beginning for me. You know, I'm, I'm washing off all the sins, all my past, and I'm starting a new life today.
We'll bring you more on the Health Clinic next week. Coming up, two Adventist universities in the U.S. are recognized in national rankings. Меня зовут Азаната, и я говорю по-русски. Есть так много замечательных видеофильмов, но так мало из них переводятся. Вы можете помочь. Join the Amara translation and caption team today. Amara is easy to learn and fun. You can volunteer in your free time. Join this community today and provide great content in your language. My brother's unexpected death shocked me into changing my life. A friend of mine said, why don't you do a triathlon? So I swam and rode and ran until I discovered life is more than just human strength. I race because my health matters. I believe because my faith matters. I'm Ed, I'm a Christian. I am an Iron Man, and I've discovered my whole life matters. It was around noon when Peter went up to the roof to pray. It was here that Peter had a vision about a large sheet containing a mix of unclean animals, representing God's affirmation of the diversity of peoples in the growing church. We had heard that Peter was staying at the house of Simon the Tanner and were instructed by Cornelius the Centurion to go out and find him. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Holy Spirit told him to go downstairs because three men were looking for him. Peter went down and told the men that he was the one they were looking for. We then told Peter that Cornelius the Centurion had been told by an angel that Peter would come and see him at his house. So, unbeknown to Peter, Cornelius was already expecting his visit to Caesarea. What happened here was quite unusual, just the fact that Peter entered the house. Remember that it was against the law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. Cornelius told Peter how three days earlier he had been praying in his house when an angel had appeared before him. Peter shared with Cornelius his new understanding that God does not show favoritism and is the Lord of all. This was a real turning point. From this point on, the gospel was also given among other people groups, and it all started out with prayer and fasting and a vision. Welcome back, and now for more news from our global church community. Two Seventh-day Adventist institutions in the United States recently made headlines, one for quality of education and the other for affordable education. La Sierra University in the U.S. state of California was recently ranked eighth in the nation for adding value to its students' education. The survey was conducted by the Money Magazine. The magazine considered graduation rates, majors offered, and additional activities, including community service and mission trips. According to the Great Value Colleges, Washington Adventist University ranks highly in educational rigor, as well as college affordability. Washington Adventist University is located in the U.S. state of Maryland. WAU ranked in the top 100 of the most affordable colleges in the eastern region of the United States. On the Polynesian island of Tuvalu, the Adventist Church recently completed an evangelistic effort to reach members who left the church. Record in Focus has more. The youth group from the Adventist Church in the capital Funafuti, together with two mission volunteers from Fiji, made the time to visit and pray with past church members in their homes in the lead up to a series of public meetings. The series was well attended and culminated with 44 new believers and previous church members being baptized in the ocean. A Seventh-day Adventist church in Ireland recently opened a center to address specific needs for its surrounding community. Inside the newly refurbished Rainalot Adventist Church in Dublin, 
community members can find the Quisley Center. Quisley is Irish for pulse or life. For five days a week, the center offers health screenings, cooking classes, parenting classes, depression recovery workshops, and massage therapy. Leaders of the center are also planning to start a weekly socialization group for women. In response to the global mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to reach people in the world's largest cities, Adventists in Guatemala accepted the challenge to help spread the gospel in their country through media. As a result, Adventist communication through radio, television, and social media has expanded thanks to the generous contributions of local members. The Adventist Church in the nation recently inaugurated two FM radio repeaters, purchased transmitters, acquired a new studio, and switched to satellite linking technology. Members in the nation gave more than 1.2 million U.S. dollars in four years to the expansion of church-run media projects. Gustavo Menendez, Director of Communication and Personal Ministries for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Guatemala said, each one of the 242,503 church members has the privilege of making the mission his or hers and becoming angels of hope by providing a gratitude and praise offering so the message of salvation can reach where they cannot get to not only in Guatemala, but across Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras, and Belize, and worldwide through the internet. More than 350 young people in Papua New Guinea committed their lives to God through baptism as a result of a seven-day youth congress. More than 10,000 people attended the World Changers Regional Youth Congress in the month of June. Attendees came from the nine different provinces of Papua New Guinea. Throughout the week, the Seventh-day Adventist youth in attendance had a chance to participate in seminars that were conducted by local youth ministry leaders. And finally in the news this week, Walla Walla University in the U.S. state of Washington has created a Center for Media and Ministry. The center offers a Master's of Arts degree in Media Ministry. The degree provides a research foundation to study ministry effectiveness. The center also serves as a think tank for creative Christian programming and technological innovation. Walla Walla University sent this report. It's really exciting to be on the leading edge of ministry. People feel the story and understand it more clearly when they see it acted out. Action. Hey man, uh, can I talk to you? Sure. And we believe that story is the most powerful tool that Christ used. Art, dynamic illustration, solid design, that's what engages a viewer. It's about helping people meet their basic needs, water, shelter, food. It's using social media in ways that we've never used before to communicate these things. It's important to find an accurate way of measuring if a media ministry will actually work. It looks good and sounds good, but is it connecting spiritually? Is it worth the money? Um, Jesus told us to tell stories, right? He taught us how to tell stories, and I think that I can do that. I think I can do that with new tools. For more information about this new online degree and to apply to the program, visit www.mediaministry.org. I'm very excited to see what comes out of that program. Media makes such a big uh, difference in, in today's world and in our church. Coming up, your weekly Tech Corner. But up next, find out what's in the latest edition of Adventist World Magazine. The American Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865, four years of misery for the nation. The death toll was in excess of 700,000, more than in all the other wars in the United States or involving the United States from the Revolutionary War down to the Vietnam War. But what if I were to tell you there is a battle raging right now with a far higher death toll? And then what if I told you that war began in heaven? Well, it did and you're involved. Now let me explain. Long ago, God created a perfect world. But according to the Bible, it's hard to understand, but there was war in heaven. 
and Lucifer, a perfect angel, became Satan who was kicked out of heaven and came down here to the earth. Now, why would he rebel? You know why? He wanted worship. He was jealous and he wanted to sit in God's place and receive the worship that belongs only to God. When he came down here to the earth, he didn't lose sight of that objective. He still wants that worship. So, he convinces the world that God is bad and that people are better off without God. Now you get to decide who's telling the truth and you can choose whose side you're on. A study in the Archives of General Psychiatry, August 2008, finds that children who do not get enough sleep are more likely to be overweight than their well-rested peers. The researchers determined that a one-hour reduction in daily REM sleep nearly tripled a child's odds for overweight and obesity. That's a fact. But there's hope. Bring back the bedtime story, prayers, and tuck-in time. Establishing a regular bedtime routine can ensure that your child gets adequate sleep and help to reduce their risk for obesity. So, for the little ones, more sleep equals better fit. Well, one of the areas uh, in children that's been the most gratifying to me is the blind kids. And these children are children that have full trust. When we built our first uh, blind school in Bobley, we took several of the kids from children to have them examinated to see if they could have the transplant. And I'll never forget the little girl. And Dorothy Watts asked her, what do you want to see when, if your operation is successful? And she said, well, I felt a cat, I petted a cow, I want to see Jesus. And when she was told that her operation couldn't be successful, she said, well, it's okay, I'll see him in heaven. Welcome back. Lyle Caesar shares what you'll find in the current issue of Adventist World magazine. The Adventist World issue for August is a mission special featuring Zimbabwe leads the way and telling how 34,000 people received free medical attention from 500 volunteers in Chitungwiza in Zimbabwe as a part of a program that also yielded 30 thousand baptisms. Mark Finley is building a new church. Mark and Tini have been gifted by God with a call and also with surprise financial contributions of, in two cases, $50,000, in another case of $7,000, which they are using as seed money for a $4 million project that will feature everything from walking paths to juice bars to lectures on archaeology, to the preaching of the gospel. And one of these days, you may be part of the new Seventh-day Adventist Encyclopedia, which is being produced by ASTR, Archive Statistics and Research, and the Adventist Review and Adventist World. Read about them in this month's Adventist World magazine. John Beckett has this report for your weekly Tech Corner. Today we're going to talk about a few things you can do to make sure your website loads quickly and works well for your visitors. The biggest problem I see for many sites is that photos are not resized or compressed well for the web. In Word, we learn to resize a picture by grabbing the corners and dragging. But for the web, you need to include a picture that's already been saved at a size close to what you plan to use. Web management systems like NetAventist sometimes handle that resizing seamlessly but many don't. News feeds and other boxes on your site that load information from other websites can also slow your page down. You can try turning them off to see if your page loads better. 
Many people use their phones or their tablets to browse the web. Try viewing your site on a mobile device and pay attention to whether your menus work and look to see if anything else is missing. For a more in-depth view about how your website performs, I highly recommend Google Chrome's developer tools as well as the free web performance tool called YSlow. The views that show element sizes and page load timelines are very helpful. Use them to find things that load slowly and Google search for how to improve them. Often changing just a few things can dramatically improve how well your website will work for your visitors. Now let's turn to David Trim for Adventist History. This week, learn why the church in Germany split during World War I. August 4, 1914 was a sad day in Seventh-day Adventist history. The First World War had just begun, and the President of the East German Union Conference wrote on that day to the German government offering assurances that conscripted Seventh-day Adventists would bear arms as combatants and would serve on the Sabbath. But a significant minority of German Adventists declared themselves conscientious objectors even though this was a status that was not recognized in German law and a number suffered severe treatment as a result. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Germany split over the issue of war service, creating bitter divisions that are only just beginning to heal. On August 8, 1972, John Lewis Brown died in St. Helena, California, one month before his 85th birthday. In 1908, aged just 19, he had pioneered literature evangelism in Mexico. There he met Esther Alma Gregory. Both later went as missionaries to Europe and they married in Switzerland. They were the first Adventist coal porters in Spain before in 1915 going as the first Adventist missionaries to El Salvador, where they planted the first Adventist church in that country. They subsequently served as missionaries in Chile, the Amazon basin, across Brazil and in Inter-America. John Brown served as various times as president of the South Brazil, East Brazil and Central American unions, and finally back at home as director of welfare work, what today would be called Adventist community services, for both the Pacific and the North Pacific Unions. That was this week in Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh day Adventist Church. In the meantime, join our global conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can connect with Adventists worldwide through more stories, photos, and videos. Visit Facebook slash Adventist News, Twitter at Adventist Church, and Instagram at Adventist Church. Our good news for this week comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. The passage says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.